I am Black history in the making. You are Black history in the making. To all the mothers who raise us and the fathers who guide us, to the aunties, uncles, guardians, to our community who support us, you are Black history in the making. To those who teach and those who preach, your Black history in the making. To those who advocate and fight for us, to those who stand up and bleed for us, you are Black history in the making. To those who dance our story, to those who sing our story, those who write and recite our story, you are Black history in the making. To those who design our tapestry, who weave our tapestry, and to those who strut our tapestry, you are Black history in the making. To those who farm it, to those who prepare it and serve it, your Black history in the making. To those who announce it, post it, and promote it, you are Black history in the making. To those who capture it, to those who compose it, to those who celebrate it and elevate it, you are Black history in the making. To those who organize it and build it, and those who invested and own it, your Black history in the making. To our children who glow in their own, to our children who have something to say, we want to hear it. To those who want to play, we want to share it. To every his story and her story, children, you are our Black history in the making. Happy Black History Month. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Sochi Bryan and 20 years ago uh, I had the idea for children's stories, storytelling, as part of Black History Month activities in Ottawa and with the support of Black History Ottawa and at the time the Ottawa Public Library we were able to make it happen and it was really important for me at that time to create a space where Black authors and the stories of Black people, Black children could be heard for, by a wider audience um, and involving different members of the community with amazing voices to be able to share that excitement with with kids and with grown-ups and with anybody who wanted to listen so um, at the time I had the support as well of Expressions of the Diaspora which is a great uh, black bookstore which is no longer there and uh, and we were able to coordinate it so a number of different people from the community came to 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 read and it was enjoyed by all. And Sarah Onyango took that idea and ran with it. And it's been 20 years and I can't believe it. So really wanted to celebrate all the um, spirit, volunteer spirit and enthusiasm that's gone into making this happen for so many years and all the people who've participated. So happy birthday, children's stories, and I'm hoping for 40 more years. Bye, thank you. And welcome, welcome everybody, our wonderful online audience, our supporters, our Black History Month celebrators, promoters. Um, welcome to the 20th anniversary edition of Children's Stories in the Diaspora. You just saw the beautiful Soshi Bryan, who was one of, I believe there were three of us, uh, Soshi, uh, Tashomi Nkrumah and myself, who started uh, this children's stories program, which has continued with different book vendors, different readers, which uh, in fact, uh, over the last number of years, joined Jacques Combit's Under the Mango Tree program to bring this program to the community, promoting Black authors, Black experiences, Black little characters, and library use. This is this has been a partnership with the Ottawa Public Library all these years, 20 years. So thank you so much to the parents who've been bringing their kids, some of them aged out, obviously, <laughs> and some of them even became readers uh, when they were older. So we're absolutely thrilled that uh, we're able to continue doing this. And uh, we're thrilled that we're able to have a virtual version of this uh, over the past three years. So you did not tune in to hear me talk. You tuned in to hear some amazing people read. We're going to start with Mr. Nathan Hall. 
This book is called Jabari Jumps. I'm jumping off the diving board today, Jabari told his dad. Really? said his dad. The diving board was high and maybe a little scary, but Jabari had finished his swimming lessons and passed his swim test, and now he's ready to jump. I'm a great jumper, said Jabari, so I'm not scared at all. Jabari watched the other kids climb the long ladder. They walked all the way out to the end of the board, as big as tiny bugs. Then they stood up on the edge, spread their arms, bent their knees, and sprang up, up, up. And then they dove down, 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 splash. Looks easy, Jabari said. But when his dad squeezed his hand, Jabari squeezed back. Jabari stood at the bottom of the ladder. He looked up. You can go before me if you want, he told the kid behind him. I need to think about my special jump I'm going to do. You go ahead. Jabari thought, and he thought, and he thought. Jabari finally started to climb up and up. This ladder is very tall, he thought. Are you okay, called his dad. I'm just a little tired, said Jabari. Maybe you should climb down and take a tiny rest, said his dad. A tiny rest sounded like a good idea. When he got to the bottom, Jabari remembered something. I forgot to do my stretches, he said to his dad. Stretching is very important, said his dad. I think tomorrow might be a better day for jumping, Jabari said. They looked up at the diving board together. It's okay to feel a little scared, said his dad. Sometimes I feel a little scared. I take a deep breath and I tell myself, I am ready. And you know what? Sometimes it stops a scary feeling and feels a little like a surprise. Jabari loves surprises. Jabari took a deep breath and felt it fill his body from the, the ends of his hair right down to the tips of his toes. Jabari looked up. He began to climb up and up and up. And up, 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 until he got to the top. Jabari stood up straight. He walked all the way to the end of the board. His toes curled around the edge. Jabari looked out as far as he could see. He felt like he was ready. I love surprises, he whispered to himself. He took a deep breath, spread his arms, bent his knees, and then he sprang up, up off the board, flying. Whee! Jabari hit the water with a splash. Jabari, you did it, said his dad. I did it, said Jabari. I'm a great jumper. And you know what? What, said his dad. Surprise double backflip is next. Working up the courage to take a big leap is hard, but Jabari is nearly almost ready to make his great big splash. That was Jabari Jumps. Hi, I'm Denise Isaacs, and today I'm going to read you a story called Brilliant Bee. It's written by Shana Rudolph and Mary Vukadinovich, and illustrated by Fiona Lee. 
They say your imagination can take you anywhere. I remember when mine didn't let me leave the classroom. While the rest of the kids in room 11 were lined up for recess, I was stuck finishing my work again. I was stucker than stuck. Stuck in Stucksville. Population, one. Mom always said I have a way with words. Dad always said I'm a real word slinger. My little brother Charlie always said I'm the greatest storyteller on earth. The thing is, reading and writing are extra hard for me. Mom and Dad tell me that's called dyslexia. It's like the words jump around the page and my eyes are trying to shoot laser beams to catch them. Every day at school, I was the last one done with my work. The daydreamer, staring out the window, and the one Miss Bloom had to use up all her patience on. I would usually try to tell her a real doozy of a story to get her off topic. It didn't make me very popular with the other kids. Whatever I had to read out loud in class, and whenever this happened, I just wanted to melt in my chair like a popsicle on a hot day. If it was hidden ham surprise day in the cafeteria, I could sometimes fool Miss Bloom that I needed to see Nurse Leo. If I did have to read, it sounded like I was reading in slow motion and fast forward at the same time. Writing wasn't much better. It's like my pencil wouldn't write what my brain is thinking. Beatrice, what's the hiccup? Can I read what you have so far? Miss Bloom asked. I nodded. She looked at the words I had on the page. I won't let dollying bring me down. What is dollying? Miss Bloom said. Bullying, not dullying, I pronounced. In her most kind way, Miss Bloom said, I think you figured it out with your brilliant brain, Beatrice. Bullying is dull. Do you know what brilliant means? Miss Bloom asked. It means super smart, I answered in a super smart way. It means bright and radiant, Beatrice. That's the opposite of dull. I am brilliant Beatrice. So the next day, Miss Bloom kept me after school. My heart hopscotched its way to her desk. She opened her drawer and pulled out some sort of ancient device. This is for you to tell your stories to. It's a tape recorder. Push this button here and away you go. Uh, thanks, Miss Bloom. I will take good care of it. Sitting alone at recess was not a new activity for me, but this time I pushed the red button. I cleared the frog, frogs from my throat and I let the words flow. Uh, why are you talking to yourself? And what is the weird thing around your neck, Beatrice? Asked Rudy. Normally, I would shrivel up and just wish him away, but not today. It records all of my stories, I answered snappily. Well, Rudy said, I love to draw. Uh, maybe I can make some pictures for your stories. I'd like that, I smiled back. You can call me Bia. That's what my friends call me. So that afternoon, Rudy helped me feel unstuck. And after a little time, recess meant that me and my new friends 
gathered by the oak tree, and sailed off in some far away adventures. Learning differently wasn't something to be afraid of anymore. My best friend and I, we created a comic book that the class loved so much, Ms. Bloom made copies for everyone to take home. And the book was called, How Brilliant Bea Found Her Shine. And someday, you will become who you were meant to be. This next book is called Not Me. Now, this conversation is going to sound very familiar to all the parents out there. Here we go. One of my son's favorites. Who left dirty socks all over the place? Not me. Was it you, Nick? No, Dad, it's not me. Okay, so no one left their dirty socks on the floor. Somebody is not telling the truth. And unless somebody does, both of you will get a timeout. What? But, Dad, you don't understand. Come, we'll explain. It's him. It's not me. He's the one who left dirty socks everywhere. Oh, oh, oh. Huh? I, I didn't leave any dirty socks anywhere. It's not true. Tell the truth or you'll get a timeout. What? I just told you it was not true. <sighs> Do I have to explain everything? Follow me. It's him. It's not true. It's me what? You're the one who's leaving dirty socks all over the place. What? This is ridiculous. I would never do such a thing. Enough. It's always someone else's fault with you guys. You, you will all get a timeout. What? But, but it's not fair. <laughs> that was not me. Good afternoon, and I hope everybody is enjoying the first couple of stories. I am Joanne Robinson, and I have the greatest pleasure of joining Sarah Nyango each year for the, re the children's stories readings. I have not completed 20 years, but I am so happy to be here and part of the storytelling. And once again, congratulations to Sarah on 20 years of children's stories in the diaspora as well as uh, Jack Ucombe, the Under the Mango Tree program was also run by the Jamaican Ottawa Community Association. And that's how I first got started with Sarah and just stayed ever since. So marking our 20th anniversary, our very own Sarah Onyango is going to be reading this afternoon. What a pleasure. So Sarah will also be accompanied by Thad Hill Samba and Nathan Hall once again as well we're going to have a collage of pictures for the past 20 years. So I hope you do enjoy. Thank you. I'm going to read a book entitled, I Promise. I Promise is a book written by the famous basketball player, LeBron James, with illustrations by Nina Mata. I promise to work hard and do what's right, to be a leader in this game of life. See all the kids going to school? You might be able to relate to this. Yes, being a leader, sometimes a follower, right? 
I promise to go to school and read as much as I can to follow the rules and respect the game plan. So see, they are in class, they are learning, they are having lots of fun drawing in their classroom. Yeah, that looks like a lot of fun. I promise to run full court and show up each time to get right back up and let my magic shine. So here they are playing, having a good time, and sometimes falling, but getting back up, you know, with a smile on their face, very important. I promise to be open and try new things and enjoy the happy that change can bring. So trying new things like swimming. Swimming is fun. But some of us are scared of jumping into the water. But once we're in the water, it's fun, right? I promise to wear a big smile and use kindness when I speak to remain strong yet humble with every win and defeat. So here you see them playing basketball, all these boys and girls. And then you see them shaking hands and saying, good job, good job, whether they win or lose. That's how it should be, right? I promise to ask for help whenever I need it to reach for my star, even when I can't see it. So here you have big brother and little sister, and big brother encouraging little sister. Good job, good job. You're gonna make it. I promise to ask questions to believe in next time and second chances. So, you know, we don't know everything. Sometimes we have questions. And when we have questions, we can ask. We can ask the teacher, we can ask our parents. There's no shame in that, right? I promise to use my voice and stand up for what's right. And when things get tough, to keep up the fight. So you see him <laughs> using his voice and maybe he's got a little voice, so he's got a megaphone so everybody can hear him. And he is speaking up about love. We need more love in this world, right? I promise to stand tall, rise up, and give all that I've got to throw the alley-oop and uplift others on the spot. More basketball, right? Yes, and even when you're winning, when you see others falling, it's always good to, you know, help them up. I promise to respect my elders and peers the same to leave new places better than when I came. See? So when you're getting on the bus and you have, you know, a smaller kid, let them get on first and always say hi to the crossing guard and be kind and be polite to everyone. That's a good promise, I think. I promise to stay true Keep my head up and never give up, no matter what. I promise to dream big and love bigger, to be a team player and a winner. More fun with friends. And you notice how happy they are to be together and play together, be kind to each other. I promise to cross bridges and break down walls to rise with the sun and learn from the falls. There they are in the jungle gym, having a great time in the fall. You see the leaves and the trees, it's the fall. 
and then someone looks like they're falling off. Ouch! But it looks like a little boy is there to help her up. I promise to be courageous, to be free, to strive for greatness. Oh, absolutely. Every time. I promise to be me. Yes. Always, always be yourself. The end. I promise by LeBron James. Illustrations by Nina Mata. Today's story is called Hair Love. My name is Zuri and I have hair that has a mind of its own. It kinks, coils, and curls every which way. Daddy tells me it is beautiful. That makes me proud. I love that my hair lets me be me. In funky braids with beads, I am a princess. And when my hair is in two puffs, I am above the clouds like a superhero. My hair even does magic tricks. One day, Rocky and I were playing outside when along came the rain. From large to small it went, presto, just like that. There is nothing my hair can't do. Today, I woke up extra early all by myself. I was too excited to sleep. It's a big day. Daddy was still sleeping. Shh, I said to Rocky as we tiptoed past him. Lately, Daddy has been worn out. He makes me breakfast, takes me to school, goes to work, picks me up, and yesterday we went for a bike ride around the park. I think he needs a break. Because today is special, I want a perfect hairstyle. This calls for a professional's touch. Paws off, Rocky. Crack. Daddy heard the crash. Zuri, what on earth? He asked. I was only trying to help, I said. Daddy smiled. Can I help too? It'll be a piece of cake, Zuzu. The first style was a big no way. The second was no better. No, Daddy. Then Daddy tried slicking my hair back into two puffs. Ouch! Daddy yelled. Wait a minute, Daddy said as he reached into the drawer and pulled out a pick. Ta-da! Daddy, really? I said. I'll be right back, he promised. Now how's that? He asked, pulling a hat down over my, my eyes. Daddy, come on! We can do better than that. I really need my hair to be special. Don't worry, he said. We'll figure this out. Then I had a big, great idea. Daddy gathered all the tools we needed, and we were set. Watching carefully, Daddy combed, parted, oiled, and twisted. He nailed it! Funky puff buns! Pretty pretty and so much fun! Rocky approved too. I put on my superhero cape as the final touch to a perfect look. Where's my Zuzu? Mommy called from the door. She could not get in the house fast enough. Mommy! You've got to be the prettiest supergirl I have ever seen, she said. And your hair is beautiful, Zuri. Who did it? 
I looked at Daddy and beamed. Mommy smiled. Very nice. Thank you. We learned from the best, Daddy said as he gave her a big hug. My hair is Mommy, Daddy, and me. It's hair love. I hope you like this story. Have a magical day. Bye. This book is called Africville. Take me to the end of the ocean. Where waves come to rest and hug the harbor stones. Where the grass runs high up the hillside and the houses lay out like a rainbow. Where home smells like sweet apple pie and blueberry duff. Take me up the hill where the berries are thick and tasty. Then meet me at the caterpillar tree. From there, we'll run back to the field for football. Go rafting down at Tibby's Pond. Catch me a codfish. Then come watch the sea bring us all its treasures. Then take me to warm summer nights down in Kildare's field, a bonfire burning red like the going down sun. Take me to where the sky turns purple and the rose in the morning and the light makes the salt water sparkle like diamonds and stars. Take me to where the pavement ends and family begins. Where my great-grandmother's name is marked in stone. Where stories are shared all around me, the old song still quietly singing. Where memories turn to dreams and dreams turn to hope and hope never ends. Take me to Africville. That was Africville.
Yes, 20 years of legacy in that collage. You saw some, uh, some of the amazing readers we've had. We've had authors, actually, children's uh, literature authors come to the program and read their own books to the kids and their parents. And um, we've also had other booksellers join us. Uh, we've had Sankofa over the last uh, number of years. But before them, we had CLN Books. And I really would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Car um, Carmen Nesbeth of CLN Books for the years that she participated in the program. We've had performers also come on the program and either do spoken word pieces or uh, like our beloved Tara Morissette, uh, do some dance. Um, Suzanne Richards also has come and uh, taught a few dance moves to the kids and the, the parents. Uh, it's just been a most extraordinary 20 years. And what you just saw in that collage doesn't even begin to reflect <clears throat> the diversity of the readers that we've had. Um, we noticed at one point that there were two many female people. So we needed for the children to hear more from men who looked like their uncles and their grandpas and their dads. And we're happy to report that the number of men continues to increase. So thank you very much to all the people who have contributed to the longevity of this program. So earlier, uh, going backwards, you heard Nathan with the book Africville by Shante Grant, an amazing author from Nova Scotia. Before that, Fadil um, read the book Hair Love, a very popular book. Before that, Nathan, again, not me. Before that, Denise. Denise has been with us from the beginning, Denise Isaacs, with her children. And uh, so her book was Brilliant Me, and Nathan kicked off the reading with Jabari. And so now we are going to hear from Sharon Guerrier. Hi kids. This book is based on the song by Bob Marley and it's called One Love, adapted by Sadela Marley, illustrated by Vanessa Brantley Newton. One love, one heart. Let's get together and feel all right. One love, what my family gives to me. One love, what the flower gives the bee. One love, what mother earth gives the tree. One love, one heart. Let's get together and feel all right. One heart, like the birds, I long to be free. One love, like the river, runs to the sea. One heart, like the music, just feel the beat. Let's get together and feel all right. One love, when your hand reaches out for me. One heart, when we touch, a new world we'll see. One love, one heart. Let's get together and feel all right. The end. Okay, okay. Hold up. Wait a minute. Did you say it's been 20 years? Well, ooh-wee. Children, 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 gather around here because I've got a story for you to hear. So back in the day, yeah, way back over there, this beautiful concept was rebirthed. Now it's nothing new, 
but it was long overdue and we just had to do it for you. So our community assembled, storytellers, fundamental, and Black History Ottawa holding it down low. Granny and Puppy sitting over there, they're reading it nice and slow. If you look over there, you'll see Uncle. He prepping and he ready to go. But listen, when you see Auntie, clear the floor because she's about to shake up this flow. So listen, for the love of you and the love of we, we've been doing this since 2003. I sit back and I think, and I just can't believe we've been doing this since 2003. I put my hand on my hip. I grab my cup for a sip. We've been doing this since 2003. Year after year, we add more flair so you never leave in despair. Stories of your name to fire your flame and crown stories of your beautiful hair. Remember the ones that encourage you to be the best that you can be? The ones with beautiful florals and Nancy morals and the ones that had you dancing up in glee. I can't tell you enough how honored we are to be sharing in your literacy. So proud to be reading to you in celebrating our Black history. So for the love of you and the love of we, we've been doing this since 2003. I sit back and I think and I just can't believe we've been doing this since 2003. I put my hand on my hip, I grab my cup for a sip because we've been doing this since 2003. For the love of you, for the love of we, we've been doing this since 2003. Knowing where you're from is to know where you're going. Children's stories of the diaspora is advocating. Authors, artists, mentors, readers are always ready to keep you growing. So from 20 years ago to 20 more and more is for you to keep the ball rolling. We show up here every year to keep our community glowing. For the love of you, for the love of we, we've been doing this since 2003. I sit back and I think, I just can't believe we've been doing this since 2003. For the love of you, for the love of we, we've been doing this since 2003. Put my hand on my hip. I grab my cup for a sip. Yo, we've been doing this since 2003. For the love of you, for the love of we, we've been doing this since 2003. Ooh, -wee. since 2003. Uh huh, since 2003. Yeah, since 2003. Let me hear you say 2003, Black History Ottawa, congratulations on 20 years. Wonderful, phenomenal, one love. All right, kids, this one. Okay, okay. All right, kids, this one is a banger, so hold on tight. It's called Mary Had a Little Plan. Mary had a little plan that sprouted on the spot. It all began the day she passed the drab abandoned lot. A stretch of mess, a marked up wall, the ground was wild with weeds. Then Mary took a look around and said, I know what this place needs. A cleanup and an overhaul, a garden path or two. Oh, the right design will be divine. There's tons that I can do. So Mary wheeled in cans of paint and trimmings for the trees. She studied every fabric choice. Ooh, the possibilities. She sent requests to local shops for flowers, tools, and wood, and trucks soon barreled down the road to help the neighborhood. Then Mary gathered bags of trash. It took her half the day. 
The sight of so much left to do consumed her with dismay. Oh, what a mess. I must confess, I'm really in a bind. But when a spider sat beside her, something came to mind. So Mary asked her friends for help. They didn't hesitate. Hooray, said Mary, follow me, it's time to renovate. Soon Bo Peep sheep went in knee deep. They chomped the weeds away. A cleanup crew knew what to do, and they fixed the disarray. The flower beds were organized in neat and tidy rows when Jack and Jill went up the hill and watered with the hose. Miss Muffet crafted cozy seats as others worked the wall. Another built a nook for books. They were free for all. While twinkling lights strung overhead and grass beneath her feet, Sweet Mary added one more thing to make the scene complete. Then Mary gathered with her friends. She marveled at the view. This little lot was quite the spot. It showed what love can do. That was Mary had a little plan. Well, we've had Mary Had a Little Plan, One Love and 20 Years, plus an, all other assortments of stories. I think we're so diverse in the different types of stories that we have this year and very grateful for all of our readers. We will now move on to our very own Sarah Onyango once again, Kaya Taggart and Sharon Guerriere, as well as Tara Morissette. So enjoy. The book I'm going to read is entitled Dear Black Child by Rama Rhoda with illustrations by Lydia Mba. Rama is a Canadian Somali. So this is a, a really, really, really good book that I know you're going to enjoy. Dear Black Child, The universe is vast, so take up as much space as you can. Literally, as much space as you can. See, little black astronaut. Stand in your own light, wear your crown with pride. Absolutely, on any stage and every stage. Let your name be your flag. Say it loud and say it proud. Wave it until it's woven in their minds. Proclaim your native tongue as the national anthem, form your own band. Roam freely, you need no permission on this land. Taking up space demands you speak confidently, so Fill your lungs with air and let your voice echo from every corner. And look at that little boy standing on the hill proclaiming his voice. Be rooted, but move swiftly as a river, taking up space means feeling at ease wherever you are. Yes, in the water, in a little boat, fishing with dad or uncle, 
or big brother or cousin, take up space. Do not fear the unknown. Instead, pave the way for others to follow. When you enter, do not fold yourself in half, hoping to go unnoticed. Dare to stand tall. Me? So when you walk into a room, you deserve to be there, you know. Stand up tall. Life is rarely without storms. The wind may roar with hurtful words from those who fear you. And sometimes when it rains, it pours. Rise and meet the tides. Drape yourself in courage and create sunlight where there is none. When in doubt, use your inner compass to lead you home. See? The little black child in their raincoat and rain boots and umbrella and lots of rain pouring. Yes. Always persevere. Don't give up. They are your lighthouse, your refuge when you feel lost at sea. Gather your strength and march on. Lots of pictures with water. Isn't that great? That's a lighthouse right there. Beautiful lighthouse. You are worthy. You are enough. You belong. This space was created for you. And look at this beautiful space with some beautiful sunflowers. That's just lovely, 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 lovely. Because you are a walking nation, a monument and a true gift to this world. And we can't wait to witness your presence and how it will shape our future. See, this is graduation. This is the beginning of the next step. This is just the beginning. The end, Dear Black Child, by Rama Roda, illustrations by Lydia Mba. Hello, my name is Kaya, and today I'm going to read to you a book by my grandmother, Faye Jarrett. It's called, And a Little Child Shall Lead Them. The front cover is by Erica Worthy Lake and the illustration is by Alan Stewart. He wouldn't believe what I saw one day as I opened the front door to go out to play, a lion sleeping on a big straw mat curled up beside Thomas, my pet cat. Lions are fierce, I heard mum say when we went to the zoo to visit one day. They scare other animals with their terrible roar, but here was one resting at my front door. I stepped over him, knees shaking with fear. Wake this wild beast? No, I didn't dare. Thank heavens, I said with great relief. But right after that, I said, good grief. For right before me with spotted paw was the largest cat that I ever saw covered all over with huge black spots, not one or two, but lots and lots. Though not as large as lion or tiger, the leopard is scarcely inferior to either. He is fierce and fast and able to kill large and small animals till he has his fill. Yet here he was in my front yard, playing ball with my little dog Shard. 
I couldn't but shake my head in wonder. But wait, what is that up yonder? Standing on its hind legs with care was the thickest, heaviest, furriest bear. And what do you think he was doing now? Why, eating berries with Betty, our cow. Bears sleep for long periods when winter is cold, but in spring they become very bold, roaming in the forest in search of honey. Having one in my yard was really not funny. Just as I wondered what I should do, suddenly and really quite out of the blue, I heard this terrible blood curdling cry. I was so frightened, I thought I could die. Up in the sheep pen, howling with glee, was a gray wolf looking as mean as could be. Yet Minnie the lamb didn't seem to mind, him pacing around her before and behind. A wolf is the most intelligent of all. He hunts all animals, large and small. For food, he will eat a mouse or a deer. Now what was he doing in my yard right here? Suddenly it began to make sense to me. Some day, this is how life for sure will be. Animals from the jungle and those from the farm, all living together without any harm. And all little children like me, no doubt, can go in the forest and walk all about. Without any fear and without any fright, that would be so cool, such a marvelous sight. It is God who made all things, pets and wild beasts. He also provides food on which they feast. One day in the future, then you will see, all living together, all will be free. The wolf will dwell with the lamb some day. The calf, the young lion, and cat will play. The leopard lie down with the dog, and then a little child shall lead them. Thank you. Hi, friends. This book is called The Hockey Jersey, and it's written by J.L. Richardson with Eva Perron and illustrated by Chelsea Charles. To everyone who has ever dreamed of lacing up skates, taping up a stick, and finding their home on the ice. On the day of the first hockey game, snow covers the trees and the road to the arena in thick, puffy whiteness. Karima rushes into the rink, carrying the bag her neighbor gave her, the one who taught her to skate on the pond outside her home, the one whose jersey hangs on her wall. Inside the change room, Camilla puts on a brand new pair of shin pads and Hannah slides on red socks that her brother brought home from his first year at college. Sam wiggles on hockey pants, sliding their fingers over the patch their grandmother stitched on with careful, crooked hands. Juliet tugs and tightens the straps on her chest guard. At the end of the bench, Winona laces her skates, determined to get them just right, all by herself, for the very first time. The change room is full of noises as the players prepare for the first game. Zippers opening wide, bags scraping across the floor, players grunting and twisting laces and straps while the Zamboni machine hums and whirs outside the door. No one says a word as they put on their equipment and glance around the room. And Karima wonders and worries if everyone is thinking the same thing in the cool of the change room. If everyone feels awkward and strange today. Is it something about the way I look? Is it my hair? My hands? My height? Is it something you know or don't know about me? Or is it something else? Are you wondering if I can skate or if I can shoot? Because I can. When Coach Sylvie swings the door open, when she enters the change room with careful steps, the players turn their attention away from one another to the heavy bag she plunks on the floor. 
Coach Sylvie crouches down and thrusts her hand inside the bag, pulling out brand new jerseys, brilliant red, deep black, and bright white, just like the kind Karima's neighbor once wore. And all at once, as they stare at their new uniforms, something magical begins to happen. They all begin to talk. It starts with low murmurs that bubble and grow louder and louder until the change room is full of voices talking and laughing as they stretch their arms into the fabric, helping whoever they can. And when they are all dressed in their new hockey jerseys, when the helmets and gloves are on as well, Karima feels something different about herself and her teammates, something she can't quite explain as they head towards the ice. In the bleachers, the players see friends and family dressed in red, black, and white. Camilla's sister stands, Hannah's brother points, Juliet's mom's wave and Sam's father claps. And when Winona's aunties cheer, everyone shouts, including Karima's neighbor who stands in the bleachers wearing his own jersey, the same number Karima wears now. Go Karima, he yells as she skates around the rink and everyone smiles. Looks like you have a fan, Coach Sylvie says. And Karima nods proudly as her neighbor sits down with her family and with all of the fans. When the players finally gather for the first game of the season, they surround Coach Sylvie and tap their sticks against the ice. And as the sound of the rumbling rhythm rises, Karima feels something big and large growing inside her as she looks at her jersey, her neighbor, her family, her coach, and her new teammates. This is more than just a game. And as all of the people in red, black, and white smile and cheer loudly as the players huddle closer, this is a whole new kind of family. The hockey jersey was commissioned as part of Scotia Bank's hockey for all initiative and our mission to make hockey more diverse, inclusive and accessible. We want all children to see a place for themselves in hockey and to feel welcome, safe and included in the game. The story of Karima and her teammates was made to inspire Canadians from all walks of life to feel like they have a place in our national game. The end. Hi, my name is Tara Morissette of Caribbean Fit Vet. Now, in order to recognize that we are Black history in the making, we need to dance. And I've got the perfect song. It's by an artist called Josiana Robinson of Bermuda. And it's called, guess what? Celebrate. So listen, clear your space, make some room, because you know how we do it. Get up, let's dance. Are you ready for this? All right, give me two steps to the side like this. Right here, I want to give you a touch, step touch. Come on, celebrate your body's movement. Give me two steps to the side again. Nice and easy, beautiful, right? Oh, you looking good. Step touch right here. Step. Oh, come on. That's right. Come on, come on now. Open up. Celebrate yourself. Black history in the making, y'all. That's who you are. Come on. Celebrate. Uh huh. All right, give me two steps to the side again. Come on. Step touch right here. Come on. Yes. 
Uh-huh. I like it. Two steps to the side. Come on. Come on. Uh-huh. All right. Step touch. You're looking good, y'all. Celebrating yourselves like that. Woo! All right. Celebrate. Come on. Take it out. Uh-huh. Put those hands up in the air. How we do it? So worthy of it. All right. Take it out. Take it out. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me, my American people? There you go. Can you hear me in Africa? Yes, you can. Can you hear me in Europe? Can you hear me in Australia? Australia. We all need to come together. That's right. Take it out right here. You're looking good, you're looking good, celebrating yourself. Do it! Come on, come on, what you got? History in the making that you are. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Happy Black History Month. Be beautiful. Be Black History in the making. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yes. Thank you. Wonderful. Sarah. Had, wonderful. Yeah, I had to sort of gather myself quickly because I was kind of, you know, <laughs> moving and, and shaking to it. Oh, my goodness. What a wonderful session this has been. And uh, I know, Joanne, you're going to give a proper vote of thanks. But one thing I'd, I'd like to remind folks is that there are Black children's literature authors out there and there are many many more than there were when we first started remember joanne oh that's when, right right when we started we had to really sort of scrape really hard mm -hmm. um, lisa uh, marshall and john bedward of expressions of the diaspora really did their best to find what they could and showcase that and then thank god uh Aita Sadu in toronto who specializes in diaspora literature, Black, Latino, Indigenous. She started importing a lot of it from the United States. But mm. now we have Canadian authors. That's right. And we really should give a heavy focus on these Canadian Black authors and demand mm -hmm. that our mainstream bookstores carry their work. Because if... Totally agree. The excuse that we were given throughout the years whenever we would go to a certain mainstream bookstore was, well, we don't really have the product. There aren't many out there, et cetera, et cetera. That can no longer be an excuse. So sure. please go online and look for these authors that you saw today, order their books, have other people order their books. And mm -hmm. another thing you can also do, there is a wonderful organization called Parents for Diversity. Parents for mm -hmm. Diversity, every year they put out for different heritage months, they put out a list mm -hmm. of books, age appropriate books that you can um, consult to either go to the library and borrow those books, or you can try and buy those books. If you can't find them in a bookstore, you can buy them online. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned earlier, a different book list, Aita Sadu. Aita Sadu carries all, mm -hmm. literally all Black Canadian authors go through that bookstore and all the books are available online. Over to you, Joanne. As well, I'd like to say that um, the libraries 
especially the one at uh, Constellation Square, are getting a lot better in carrying um, books for our children. And although we didn't get to go there this year with our virtual, I'm sure we'll be back there again and to see how diverse they become and inclusive. So with that being said, Sarah, I want to thank you once again, 20 years. 20 years. My and thank goodness. you, Joanne, because, you know, at one point I was alone trying to do this. And then you came on board, embraced this initiative completely. And uh, everybody, just so you know, Joanne has been courting coordinating this for the last decade at least and recruiting all the readers coordinating everybody's schedules in the last three years coordinating all the recordings with our wonderful friends at bia media how about a round of applause for bia media yes as well as our very own jean-marie guerrier jean guerrier our um, vice president yes powerhouse <laughs> absolutely Absolutely. And the rest of the Black History Ottawa board who've also been supportive and yes. have often attended. Uh, but frankly, it's the readers and the kids. If That's we right. didn't have an audience and we didn't have volunteer readers of all ages. Yes. All ages. Okay. Well, even a granddaughter today was, I was just so Kaya Taggart. impressed with that. And I'm sure Faye is, her heart is Faye so Jarrett, warming. Yes. 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 That a was local awesome. author, by the way. And we've had others. We've had uh, Angelo Dongmo come on. We've had mm -hmm. Michael Asivero come on yes. and read his book. Yes. We've actually had Faye Jarrett come uh, to Children's In Stories person. and read yeah. her book. So this is a full circle moment for her, now her granddaughter to be, read, to be reading a more recent book. That's right. Thank you all so very much for tuning in today. Thank you for listening. Thank you for participating. Thank you so much to all of our readers. Nathan, you held it down <laughs> as, as the men portion of our reading for this, this time around. And we thank you all very much. We thank you for your time. I know that sometimes when you ask someone to do something virtual, it's not as easy as if they're in person. So we thank you for taking the time to get that done. And we also want to thank the Ottawa Public Library as well. And I think I have covered all of our thank yous, except Sarah, once again, thank you for letting me be part of your children's stories. Oh, it's I been my honor. I am very honored. It, it's, it's our children's stories and it's, right. it's been my honor. And I really hope to see this grow even in other communities. And mm -hmm. hopefully, uh, one day soon in the future, nous aurons une version française yes. de children's stories yes. in the diaspora. For sure. Thanks, everyone. Happy Black History Month. Have a good afternoon. Thank <laughs> you.